Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Miss uh, Warren says Matthew be down to the barn. Now, look here, you two young people. When you get with Matthew, let me handle the talking. Mr. Tucker, I bow to your superior knowledge of cows. Now, we ain't going to mention cows. But cows, Mr. Tucker, is why we're here. Yes, uh, what would you suggest that we talk about? The uh, weather? Weather? Yeah, weather's always pretty safe to talk about in the trade. Can't buy the weather, and other fella can't sell it to you. Perfectly safe. In chess, you might call talking about the weather an opening gambit. <laughs> well, if we want to buy a car, I don't see why we don't just come right out with it. That'd be the honest thing to do. What's honesty got to do with buying a cow? Well, I hope it's got no little to do with buying this one. Look here. I suppose you two would just go right in on Matt Warren and say, uh, Mr. Warren, we want to buy a cow. But that is what we want. You'd never buy one. That would put all the wanting onto one side. What you got to do is make Warren want to sell you a cow. And the more he wants, the more reluctant you'll be. It seems so complicated. Of course it's complicated. What fun would it be if it wasn't complicated? Look here, Mr. Norton. You be a right known sort of feller. No, thank you, Mr. Tucker. Well, learn your wife something about Yankee trading. It's man's business anyhow. Women ain't no good at it. But Jared Tucker's good at it. Ain't nobody no better at trading than Jared Tucker. <laughs> Let the old man run the show, yes, Doc. Uh, uh. Howdy, Matt Warren. Jared Tucker here. David Norton here, too. David Norton's wife here, too. Uh, howdy, 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 folks. Just finish milking and sit right with you. We, uh, we was just passing along be the road, and I says to the Nortons, I says, sir, uh, Matt Warren's probably milking. It being milking times. How's we mosey over and say howdy? Howdy. 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 I, uh, I was just saying to the Nortons, looks like we might get some weather. The weather like the poor is always with us. Yeah, yeah we might, we might. There's ring around the moon on the last pool. Uh, too much rain when we didn't need it, and then not enough when we did. In a normal year, we'd had a fine cut in the rowing. This year, it was so measly, it wasn't worth wetting the side of the handle. What's rowing? A uh, last cotton, full of nutrient is. Just chuck full of protein. Nah, cows go to it like bees to honey. Mind how he was the first to talk about cows? What'd you say, Jerry? I says, like, like bees to honey, like bees to honey. That's honey. right. Feed uh, round to milking cows, and they give down milk by the pailful. Uh, speaking of cows... Like you just was, uh, Matthew, how many you got now? Eh, uh, fifteen. Fifteen cows. Whew. Sight of cows, yes, sir, sight of cows. It's a wonderful sight of cows, Mr. Warren. All standing in a row like... Like, uh, like cows. You start praising them and Matthew will have them priced out of all reason. <clears throat> I'm right sorry, Matthew, right sorry that you're feed short this year. Short for all of us, all of us. Uh, look here, Mr. Warren, I've got I've a whole... got, uh, got the same idea, too. Yes, sir, same idea. Times come hard. We've got to cut our suit the measure of our cloth, yep. You got enough hay for 14 cows, then you keep 14 and sell one. Hey, uh, hey, you got something in mind, Jared? Oh, nary thing, nary thing. I was just uh, generalizing, Matthew. Uh, uh, hey, you'll be the kind of man, Jared, that seldom generalizes without self-interest. Uh, you aiming to buy a cow? What would I be doing with another cow, Matthew? Oh, look, Mr. Warren, we've got an our barn. Matthew, one... these two young people be so generous and open-handed, they'd probably offer to give you their hay. Ah, oh, well, that'd be right generous, but I'm afraid it wouldn't help me none. The way I see it, I got enough hay for 12 cows, and being as I got 15, your little would help, but it wouldn't help you enough. Matthew, I got a sudden idea. Uh. Slow or sudden, your ideas are always expensive to the other fella. Well? Well, what you got in mind? Well, I got in mind that a little trading is in order. What you got to trade, Jerry? Advice, Matthew, and uh, maybe a little something more. I'll do without the advice. What's the something more? The advice you'll get for free. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I was afraid of that. 
Miss Norton, uh, you got a young one over to your place? Bobby, yes. A young type that likes to drink a parcel of milk, I'll warrant. Milk's expensive as all get out, too. More than that, in the country, a kid ought to sort of get to know the cow's feet. Well, I don't think Bobby's old enough to... He'll be old enough, old enough soon enough. Besides, you be good neighbors, and what kind of neighbors would you be if you wouldn't put yourselves out to help old Matthew? Now, Ward? look, it ain't their health I'm a worrying about. Thank you all the same, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. It's your help, Jerry, that I really worry for. Me? I ain't in this store. No, not so as I can see yet. But you will be before we're done. Matthew, you're an untrusting sort of man. Now, we've traded before. That's what I'm remembering of. Now, let's say, just for the sake of argument, just for the sake of argument, mind you, that I might do some selling the cow. Just for the sake of argument, let's say. Uh, hypothetically, Mr. Norton, if you was interested in cows, how many cows would you be interested in? Well, we thought... We they'd... were thinking of just one cow. Just one? Just one. Just one. Jerry, your idea is no good. The Norton's buy one cow, I've got 14 and food for 12. Now, we, we've got to have a better solution than that, Jerry. I'm thinking... I'm thinking, uh... Miss Norton, you sure you wouldn't be able to use three cows? Oh, I'm not too sure we'll know what to do with one. And anyway, we wouldn't have enough feed for the three. Oh, yes, yes, not enough feed. That's fly in the ointment, Matthew. We've been talking, talking, talking off on a tangent. We've been talking about cows, but cows ain't your trouble. It's feed is your uh, trouble. Jerry, these folks should have sent you to Congress. That's the kind of fool talking that's got this country into the mess with you. What kind of a mess are we in? I ain't got enough feed for my cows. That's messing up. And that's the fault of the Continental Congress, I suppose. Here I am trying to help you out, and you're hooting and hollering about the government. I ain't hooting and hollering about that. Yes, you be. If you don't be fewer words, you're, you're apt to sour my milk of human generosity. Ah, uh, your milk of human generosity has been sour for years. I'll show you how sour it be. I ain't got too much feed to spare. But if, for the sake of argument, you was to sell a cow to Mr. and Mrs. Norton, I might, I might, I say, uh, be able to scrape up enough hay for two cows for you. How much? How much what? How much hay? Oh, I know as well as you do, Jerry Tucker, how much hay two cows will eat by winter. What I want to know is how much you charge. Oh, if you was drowning, you'd probably ask the price of straw. I would, if you were selling the straw. We traded before, Jared. Well, we been trading now. I'm trying to do you a favor, and you're being mundane and illy masonary. And eh? Any hay I sell to you, I'd sell it six dollars under the Boston market that day. Uh, fair, uh, fair, as far as I can see. But I'd like to see further. In your barn or mine? Ah, uh, you're not trading with a child, Matt. In my barn, of course. My truck or your truck? Your truck. Who needs this, hey? You or me? You lend me a hand with it? At the price I'm charging? No. Huh? Wouldn't have no respect for myself if it did. But I'll tell you what I will do. Completely outside of this deal, and because we're old friends and neighbors, I'll work right along with you. Well, it couldn't be more generous. Who sweetens the bargain? The feller that wants it most. <laughs> and I'm looking at him. Your hay is good quality as mine? Well, let me see yours. In. Step right over here to the foot of the mound. I'll show you. All right. I'll go and take a look at you. My head is swimming. <laughs> Mine's a little confused. <laughs> I guess we're not very good Yankees. <laughs> we're just learning the rules of the game. <laughs> Those two old codgers are having a wonderful time. Say, David, what do you mean by sweeten the bargain? After two Yankees have reached a bargain, they begin all over again to see who sweetens it. Sweetens with what? In the old days, sometimes with rum. Oh. Just a little something extra so everybody's happy. So they both get the taste of trading out of well, their mouths. <laughs> there's my difference between your hay and mine, Matt. My hay will run better. better. Well, the bargain is the Norton's buy one cow... And you sell me four tons of hay on the terms of four stated. If. If. If what? If the Nortons find a cow they like. And if the cow they like's priced at the price they like. 
If after we've all slept on it, we still like the barking. Well, I'm sure that Mr. Warren and I... Sure, yes, yes, and I'm sure, too. Howsomever, wise men proceed in these matters cautiously. But, Mr. Tucker... But there ain't no buts about it. You two young'uns being sharp enough to trade with either Matt or me. Just to keep her hands in, we might trim you. <laughs> However, or howsomever, you and Matthew are boundary neighbors. Whatever happens, you both got to be so satisfied you won't never have no sharp feelings between you. Yeah, yeah. David, look at the time. We'll be late for supper. Mom will be worried. Uh, well, eh, uh, uh, Mrs. Norton, uh, it's too late for more trading anyway. Uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow, neighbors. Well, all right. Uh, will you be coming along with us, Mr. Tucker? Coming along with you? No, no, I'm afraid we talked and gabbed so long that Matthew here is late with his chores. Uh-huh. I guess I better stay along and lend him a hand now. I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you two tomorrow. Uh, good night, you two young men. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night, Mr. Warren. <sighs> when I tell all this to Mama, I know it won't make one iota of sense. <laughs> First we have a cow, and then we don't. And then we'll talk about it some more tomorrow. And they're pretending to be so sharp and shrewd and grasping, down underneath so honest and generous. I'd hate to be still cutting my eye teeth and have to deal with either one of them alone, though. Sort of like a, a, a game between them. A game? Trading is their Yankee kinds of life's blood, their bread and their meat. Trading to a Yankee is like opera to an Italian or bullfighting to a Spaniard, tea to an Englishman, a haggis to a Scotchman. David, what is a haggis? A haggis is a... Well, it's a... David, look at that moon. What would it be worth your while to trade me a kiss? <laughs> Why, you little Yankee, you. <laughs> you can't keep at any job hour after hour and give it your best effort, whether it's housework, shop, office, or factory work. An occasional pause is bound to be relaxing, especially if that pause includes ice-cold Coca-Cola. You'll find it's a good idea to keep a supply of Coke on ice so that its delicious refreshment can help you work refreshed at any time. Hi there, Mr. King. Tucker here. Well, Mr. Tucker, good to see you. You look mighty pleased with yourself about something. I'm uh, just doing some trading. Always feel good when I'm trading. <laughs> oh, did you and the Nortons buy a cow? Oh, not yet, not yet. But uh, we be in the process of. We got Matthew Warren licking his chops and uh, drooling at his mouth. Uh, what's the next step in the uh, uh, process? Well, we just let him dangle for a day, and then when he's mite over-eager, we'll, we'll go to trading. Well, watch out. You're not a mite over-eager yourself. Me? I was trading when Matthew was in short britches. Uh, just tag along tomorrow, and you'll see some cow trading. Uh, you're just a plain trader at heart, aren't you, Jared? Plain trader? God dang it, son, I'm a fancy trader. <laughs> well, I wouldn't miss it tomorrow for the world. See you then, Jared. As I was about to say, every day, Monday to Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manu Star. The entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> 